This is Diane again with Phil's Sewing Virtual Club. Today we're going to be using the Foff Creative Icon 2 uh, to show you how you can create this beautiful spring towel. So uh, we're going to be using a lot of the different fonts that are built into the machine. Then we're going to merge in designs. Uh, we're going to bring in um, fonts that are on the swing shot side of the of the machine as well um, so I think that we're going to incorporate a lot of different features that this machine has to offer and so we're gonna just get into it right away so just remember kind words are like honey to the soul and um, let's just get started okay the first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to set up our workspace. And by doing that, we're going to select the hoop sizes that we're going to, or the hoop size we're going to work with for this towel. So I'm going to click on hoop options down here at the bottom. Okay. And hoop options, and we're going to scroll up, and I'm going to select 260 by 200. Okay. Uh, then after you do that, we're not going to do anything with the grids or anything else at this point in time. So to close out of this field, you're going to reselect the hoop options and it closes it out. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, create um, a template that we know that we have to stay within for the hoop that we've selected for that 260 by 200 hoop, okay? So first things first is I'm gonna come over to create this, uh, this, um, this template. I'm gonna come into Applique Creator. It's down here at the bottom. As you notice, there was several categories down there. We selected Applique Creator. Now we're going to create the shape that we have to stay within. So I'm going to come up here to this uh, toolbar over here on the, on the right side. I'm going to select the first icon on the top. Okay. Then we're going to come to Basics. In Basics, we're going to create and utilize the square. Okay. Now and I'm going to close out of here for the present time. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this uh, shape so that uh, it's the size of the template that we're going to be utilizing. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and do Edit Applique. Opens up into a sizing uh, little um, tool. It right there in the very center okay to select the sizing over here we want to select the second category okay one two it's right over uh, it's in the very center there now we're also so that we can row or uh, create um, a rectangle we're gonna open the padlock as you can see right there is a padlock I clicked on it it's open. So now I can resize and create that template um, as needed. So I'm going to hold down the first category, opens up into this field where I can type in uh, the size that I uh, want the hoop to be. So the first one is, uh, right now it's a square hoop. So uh, we're going to set the width to 7 and a half inches, 7.5. And it appears right there. Click OK to it. It's resize the width. Now we're going to also do the same thing for the height. We're going to click on the height, hold it in, and it pops open our little um, keyboard that shows all of our different uh, numbers. And we're going to uh, make it 8.5. Five. Say OK to it. OK. Uh, I'm going to close out of this. And you can see how it's uh, resized that particular shape. OK. Under positioning, OK. Uh, well, we're not going to do anything in the positioning field at this point in time, okay? We're going to go back into the editing. And since this is a template only, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that top 
uh, layer or the satin stitch that would go around the applique design because we're not using it as an applique design. We're only using it for a template only. So we're going to remove it. There's a little trash can here. And what it does is it removes that satin stitch uh, from our workspace. We're pretty much done with this. So we've created our template. We know we have to, when we're placing our designs in there, that we have to stay within that field that we've created. Click on OK. Takes you back into the Embroidery Edit field. Very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom. As if you remember our towel, okay, we have letters and we also have our coffee cup. We're going to put the coffee cup in first because it's one of the bigger aspects of this design. So first things first, we're going to come over here to our side toolbar. Okay, in here is where your designs are uh, located. Okay, the design that we're going to use here is under the kitchen category. So we're going to scroll over. As you can notice, there's several different categories here. This, that, holiday, uh, children, quilt, kitchen. Okay, that's what we're going to choose at this time. So we're going to select kitchen. And here is the designs. Oops, wrong one. We don't want that one. So we're going to hold and delete. If you do one by mistake, that's that's fair. It happens. Uh, I'm going to go back in there, though. Okay, one thing that I just want also you to be aware of, we do not want the uh, template to be highlighted or selected at the time. So I went in there, deselected it, and came back in again. Okay, these kind of things happen. And so um, we're going to go back into the designs under the kitchen category. I'm going to scroll. Uh, you can see the different designs that are in here as well. Okay, the design I want is that little coffee cup right there. So we're going to select it. It pops onto our workspace. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to put it down into position. I'm not going to resize it at this time. We can always resize, resize as we go along if we, if we need more space or less space or if you want that, that coffee cup to be less prominent. But at the present time, I like the positioning of that coffee pot because, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, it's right at the bottom area of our template. And we're going to leave room around it as well to place our lettering. Okay, so now that's where I want to position. I'm going to deselect everything. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in that little flower right here, the little tulip design, because we're we're talking spring here, so I want my design to be a tulip. So I'm going to go back into my design load area, okay, and then over here, as you can see, other categories, and the next one over is called mini, okay. In that field, again, I've got several different designs that I can work with and merge in but I want the little tulip. So I'm going to select the tulip, bring in, there it's positioned right there. I'm going to move it over to the center portion of the coffee cup. And we can move it as needed. So if I need to move it over and I wanted to use, <coughs> excuse me, the little toolbar right here to move it ever so slightly. I can do that. Click it to the left. Okay. Always deselect. Okay. Hi. I just hit, needed to get a little drink of water there because I got a little tickle in my throat. But anyway, uh, and I also, when I was looking uh, so that my finger is in isn't interfering with what you see on the screen, I got a little stylus out too, and I thought that that would be helpful. Okay, so anyway, with the stylus, what I found is I can move this design around, and I can um, do my 
So this works really well. Okay, but anyway, I moved the little uh, mini design, the tulip mini design, a little bit over. And I mean, you're going to be able to fine tune this as you're looking at that screen directly on. Right now, I'm kind of looking at the side, and so I'm trying to size it and resize it as best as possible. Another thing that you can also do is over here on this toolbar, you can move that floating toolbar out of the area. Sometimes I like it close, sometimes I'll move it up here, sometimes I'll put it over here. So that option is always available for moving that toolbar out of the way. <clears throat> so now after I'm done with this, I'm going to select outside the area. Oops, that time I needed my finger. And I'm going to close out of this area here. So, And it, it also gives you the ability to see your screen a little bit more in its entirety. Okay. Another thing that you can do with it is you can take your fingers and pinch it and make it smaller. Okay. You can do that. And that way you can see more of the screen. So we may be going back and forth with that option because sometimes you like it big and bold and other times you want to see the entirety of the design. So you're going to uh, zoom it so that you, you see it all on the screen without the toolbars interfering. Okay. So we've got our flower merged on top of the coffee cup. The coffee cup itself is just an outline design. So that coffee cup, you'll see the fabric of your towel behind it. And that'll, you know, it gives it a little bit a uh, different look to it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to come back over here to merge another design in there. So this time we're going to place these little designs down here at the bottom. These two little designs right there. So I'm going to scroll down, and those are under the mini designs as well. And here it is, number 31, design number 31. Put that in there, and I'm going to move it down to approximately right there. So, okay. So with that being said, you can resize, and so you can rotate, resize, and all those great things that we like to do when we're customizing. But I'm going to leave that design the size it is as well. Okay. Now I want a duplicate. I could go back into this design area where you're going to load your design, select them, and load them onto your screen. But another way to do it is if you were to hold down onto the design itself, you get another set of opportunities that you can use. You could delete the design if that was a design that you just didn't see working for you at this time, or you could duplicate, you could multiple duplicate as well, you could mirror uh, side to side, end to end, and so forth and so forth. Okay, I'm going to duplicate. So what it did is it duplicated the design. I'm gonna use the same design and I'm going to move it on over to about right there. If we click outside the line, we'll see. And of course, what I like to do is make sure that the bottom of the designs are lined up with one another so that, you know, you could also use a grid at this time, but, you know, sometimes the grid gets a little confusing to look at. So I chose not to use the grid. But you could do the grid, and the grid would be found under the hoop options right here. So I think that that's pretty good. So, okay, we've got our coffee cup, we've got our tulip design, and we've got our little flower sitting down here at the base, okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get into showing you some of the, the different fonts that we can utilize um, in the machine itself. So every design and every font that we're working with today is built into the machine. So... Um, we're going to go into our fonts category, which is over here on our side toolbar. Just scroll down. It's a letter A. And embroidery fonts versus stitch fonts. Okay. We're going to be working at this time with the embroidery fonts. Okay. The embroidery font that we're going to work with to begin with is font number, um, let's see, Pouty. We're going to scroll down to Pouty 30. Okay. So 20, we got another one right here. Here it is, Pouty 30. As soon as we select it, we get a keyboard that opens up. And so at this time, what you can do with this is you can start typing in your phrase or, or your words that you want um, this particular font to be applied to. Okay, so 
I'm going to start with kind words. That's what I'm going to type in at this time. I'm going to deselect my uppercase. Okay, kind, space, and then I'm going to use uppercase word, or W on the word, W, deselect the uppercase again. Okay, kind words. So now uh, what you could also do here, I'm going to scroll this up a little bit so that you could see it a little bit better. Okay. Uh, you could also audition other fonts if you so choose. So this would be a graphite that's too big. Here's uh, the pouty uh, number 12, too small. The pouty 20, well, that could work. But, you know, I still think for this application, it might be a little too small as well. So I opted for the pouty 30. Okay, after you have selected the font that you want, you can close out of this so that you could see it better onto your workspace. Now, before we go any further, I also, in this category, I want to select uh, how it's like the text shapes that we want to use. So in this category, <clears throat> here it is, I want to select the straight line. Okay, when I use this, here we go, I'll just move that up there so that you can see it. I can manipulate this so that, um, you know, I can spread out my text or my words. I can do like an arcing if that's what I so choose. But I want it to be just like the straight line text, okay? And there it is, the straight line text. Now, I'm going to close out of this keyboard by clicking on this icon right here. Closes out of it. And it allows me then to utilize my shape creator to customize that those words even more so. So I'm going to go into shape creator. Okay. Now, there is several different things I want to change in here, like possibly moving my words further apart or closer together. I can do any of that under the positioning field. I'm going to click on positioning. And in here, I'm going to just click on something so that you can see the change that it makes. You can flip it upside down. Well, that's not really what I want. So I'm going to go back to where I can read it like that. You could arc it as well. Okay. And then you have these options, the spacing. And different things like that. I'm going to take it back to where it was set as a default. So back to the first category and this field. Now I could also de er, d decide what justification I wanted. Do I want it sitting on the line? You could see how it's making changes. This way if I were to rotate it then it would go um, vertical rather than horizontal. But I still want it to go vertical. Okay, so you can see different things that you can utilize. The bottom one down here, this one uh, would allow me, if I so choose, to make changes to the justification. You know, if, if you remember when you were uh, a very young child and you were learning to write, you know, it's what letters set you know, on the line versus which letters were below the line. This is kind of like choosing at the center line where the letters are a position, okay? This one would be below the line, but we still want to keep it, you know, so that they're sitting on the line. So we're going to utilize this particular category here. We're going to say OK to this. And then what it does is it takes us back to this uh, template area where we can place our words. Now I'm going to get into uh, another field like this particular field right here is called uh, the layers. This is breaking it down so I can further customize 
this uh, this line of lettering by coming in here. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to ungroup those letters. It comes in grouped together and a color was chosen for us as well, which is fine. We're, we'll stay with that color. But then if you scroll down here, you'll see all the letters in that phrase or all the both words selected. Now, what I want to do is, um, I'm going to close out of here so we can see this. I want to select the word or the letter W, okay? That's the only one because I want it to be a little bit smaller. Remember when we typed it in, we typed it in as an uppercase W, but I, I like the shape and the, the styling of that W more so than I did the lowercase w. So what I'm going to do is resize that w downward. So to do that, we're going to go back into our layers. I'm going to turn off select multiples, or turn it off so nothing is selected. And then we're going to only select the word, or the letter, I keep saying word, and it's really the letter, w. Okay, so I'm going to close out of there. Now, that's the only letter that's selected at the present time. So I can work with it separate from all the other letters. So I'm going to come into my edit design. And remember our little uh, icon or tool right here in the middle, okay? This will reposition. It'll also resize let me resize that lettering. So I'm going to go in here, resize it, and it's locked. So I'm going to go downward with that letter. Okay. So if you notice, it only let me take it down so far. Okay. If I wanted to take it down even further so that it's even with the, with the letters like the ORD, the tops of them right there, I can come back over in here and do the resize button at the very bottom. This gives me a lot more flexibility. I'm going to click on resize here, and then I'm going to go down. Notice how it allows me to take this letter even further downward. And when I'm using this particular category, it's also uh, recalculating the stitches that I have. I'm going to just come over here and deselect, oops, I can't do that just yet because I'm still in here. So if I come in here and say okay to it, and I look at that and say, okay, is that letter about the same size as the OR? And it could be a little bit smaller or shorter. So I can come back in here to resize again. <clears throat> Click on resize down here, and I'm gonna take it down lower. Okay, I'm going to say okay to it, and I think that that's pretty good. So kind words, you know. Now, another thing that I want to do is my O and my R are a little too close together. So I'm going to select the, uh, let's do the O, come back into my layers. I'm going to scroll down until I get to the O, close out. You can select it by just tapping on it, but sometimes it's easier to select if you go into your layers, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to come back over to Edit Design, and I'm going to click on the left arrow to move it over towards the W. Okay. A little bit more so. You can see how I can select that. And move it over a little bit more. Let's see how that one works. That's getting better, but I think we can do a little bit more. Okay, I think that's perfect. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with it is I'm, I'm done with the editing portion here. I'm going to make sure that I place Oh, one thing we forgot to do is come back over in here into my layers. And now what I'm going to do is select multiples, and I'm going to group them all back together again. So I have to select each one, even the space in between. As you can see there, this is the space. I'm going to come up here, group it, close out. Now when I move them, oops, I have to select them. I can move them as one unit. So I'm going to just uh, 
we can always manipulate and move this later on as we create more words. So I'm going to just move a little bit higher up. Okay, so deselect. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, bring in another font. We're going to open up and we're going to type in the words are like, but before we do that, we have to select our font. And I think at this point in time, I want to select curls 20. Okay. Here again, we can con or we can audition different fonts as we so choose, but I'm going to come and type in my phrase first so that it uh, shows up a little bit nicer. Okay. Space, A-R-E space, and then like, L-I-K-E, typed it in. Okay. I like that. Let's see. Here again, we can move it into position such as this. That's the positioning of it somewhat. Okay. Now, before I go any further, I also want to come in here and I want to do uh, adjust my text shapes. So whenever I'm into here, I always want to hit this button if I want to want more uh, flexibility with uh, customization. So by clicking on this, it's giving me the option of getting into my shapes uh, category a little later for customization. Okay, so move that in there. Okay, so I've selected it, close out of my keyboard, and there we are. Now we can take this in, again, into my shapes creator. And I can customize the positioning or the, the, the justification on that line. So by coming to positioning, okay. And the thing is, I, you know, I want you to be flexible with this, coming in here, experimenting with it, and so forth, because it's going to show you different opportunities that, you know, you might not want to miss out on, okay. Because here what I did is I did the... Uh, the justification to the very center of uh, the word or of the the line itself, and I kind of like that because they're kind of they kind of they move around a little bit more, and they're 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 just cuter. Okay, so I do like this. Notice how the e is kind of sitting on top, uh, you know, by the k. You know, it's in the the very center of that letter, uh, and so I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going to say, hey, I like this. I am going to just accept it and move on. Let's say click OK to it. OK, and that's where that's positioned. OK. And of course, you can, you can reposition as you so choose. But for this project, we're going to do it this way. OK. Uh, the next word that we're going to work with is uh, honey on our towel. So we're going to do some arcing with that one. Okay. So back over to our letter A. And with this one, I'm going to use uh, times. Uh, let's see. Let's do times 20. And you can experiment. Like I said earlier, experiment with it. Uh, once you figure out what you like and what you don't like, or, you know, maybe it'll look good for this project, maybe it won't, you know, but experiment with it and see. Okay, so I'm going to type in honey. And it, with this word, I left it in all capitals. Okay, all caps right here. I didn't remove the caps. Um, so then I'm going to touch on this arcing capability. I'm going to touch the second one in. Okay. Uh, close out of my lettering. I'm pretty well set with that's the letter I want to use. Um, it's not fitting so good. So what we can do here, let's close out of our um, text field. And I want to, what I'm trying to do is select this one and move it over something like that and the honey so if you select them both at the same time they're both going to move that's what i was trying not to do so i want only the honey word selected okay so now i still have the same option i can come into my shapes creator 
Okay, when I get into positioning, I have many different options again that we can work with. Okay, so with this one, it shows the spacing too far apart. Don't like that. Too far to the left. That one is pretty much right in the center, and the other one takes it over to the right too much. So we're going to do the this one right here, the spacing, the third one over. Oop, selected the wrong thing. Come back, put it in there. Okay. Now, there's other uh, positioning techniques that you can utilize too. This one has the, the letters a little bit closer together, or we could do something like that. So I tell you at this point in time, experiment with them, see what you like, okay? That one, not going to work. So we're going to come back up here, and I kind of like this one. This one kind of takes it down lower, below the line, and this one above the line. So this one is a good one. So we're going to go ahead and place it just above the coffee cup. And as you're manipulating and designing, oops, I, I can't move it because it's still in that field. So I have to click OK to it to get out of there first. To accept those changes and then what I can do come over here and manipulate and move it around here again if I hold down too long then that other field opens up and allows me other opportunities which you know I uh, not that you know see there again delete no we don't want to delete so we want to move this one over a little bit further maybe this one up towards the top a little bit more and you can see I'm just moving things around as I need it okay and this one maybe and I can also come over here and utilize my uh, that center tool and move it up down whatever you know this sometimes is easier to work with uh, than trying to manipulate and move them, you know, with your finger or with your little stylus. But I kind of like that, so um, I'm going to leave that go, okay? Next word I'm going to work with, come back over here to the A, my text field, okay? In this category, I'm going, or in this, this time for uh, the words to the, I'm going to utilize graphite 20. So I'm going to come down here, find my graphite 20, select it, and then I'm going to do uppercase T, lowercase O, space, then lowercase the, T, H, E, okay. Come over here again, put, put it on that straight line. Okay, um, close out of this cat or of the, the fonts category and come down here and under my text shape I want to do a straight line so I'm going to come over here and do close out of it as well. This particular one I'm going to pretty much leave it as it is. Okay, to the. Okay. Um, and then we have one more word that we're going to add right down in here, and it's kind words are like honey to the soul. Okay, so coming back over here into my, my font folder, and on this one, I'm going to use curls again. And this time I'm going to use curls 30. This one. Type in soul uppercase, lowercase, O, U, L, okay, come over here, just in case we want to customize a little bit more down the road, do your text shape, make sure it's on the line, okay, close out of my fonts folder, I can also um, 
manipulate and spread the word or the, the letters further apart if I so choose. So on the straight line, I can do the minus or the plus depending upon. Okay, I might. Oh, can't move it yet. Okay, once we get it a little more space in there, close out of my um, my typing or my text field. Move the word soul down into position. Okay. So now at this time, you can manipulate and play with your uh, positioning of your uh, phrases or your individual words. Okay. So just always make sure when you do that, you know, that you select only the phrase or the word that you want to work with. Otherwise, you'll move them all. I'm going to, there again, that message. I'm going to move this one over a little bit this way. Okay. And what I'm doing here is I'm leaving a space right here because we're going to merge in a, a B to sit right in that space. And so, uh, Depending upon positioning, and you can move these, like I said, move them around wherever you so choose um, as needed. Okay, so I'm going to close out of there. Then you can see what it looks like at this point in time. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to put, you know, using the font that comes in the swing side of the of the creative icon too, we're going to utilize that font, okay? It's a little bit smaller and finer. So if you remember, under our font folder, loading font, we talked about stitch fonts. Stitch fonts are built into the swing side of the machine. Okay, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different fonts that you can utilize. The one that I'm going to utilize, and it's a size 12, and you can see the 12, the 9, the 17, that's the size of that particular font. Okay, so with this block alphabet, that's what I'm going to utilize. So I selected it. Now it opens up into a sequence creator field. Okay, since we're going to be embroidering this on the embroidery side and not on the sewing side, it opens up into the sequence creator. Now in this field, we have the same option where we're going to type in our uh, words or a phrase, whatever it might be. So since this phrase is from Proverbs 16-24, uh, we're going to type that in. So uppercase again, lowercase, O-V-E-R-B-S, space. Then we're going to come into our numbers category, 16, colon, 24. Okay, and if you notice that if, and I didn't mention this on the sewing or on the embroidery side of the fonts, but if you make a mistake, you can always do uh, the backspace if you make a mistake, see how it takes that away. And um, if you do, you can always correct it. So it's 16, 24. Okay. Once we're done with this, you know, we don't have any of uh, the editing capabilities right now, not like we did uh, per se in the embroidery side. Uh, so we're going to close out of our letters. Okay. Now, what I also want to do is I want to get back, at, I want to get back to where we can rotate this. So I'm going to say okay to this. I could have gone in there and edited stitches if I wanted to, uh, but in this particular uh, project, we're not going to do that, okay? So let's get out of there. Here is our uh, Proverbs 1624 that we just uh, applied the stitches to, okay? So I'm going to come over to my edit design, and I want to rotate it. So if I get into the rotate field, which is right down below the positioning field right here, and it's got the 90 in the middle, okay? I'm going to click on that three times. 
and that rotates it so that we can see that Proverbs. And I'm going to close out of this so that we can put it down below here. We can always get back into it by selecting it and then selecting Embroidery Edit, which is Edit Design right there. Okay, so now I think we pretty much have it, except for the fact we have to add our honeybee right up there. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our designs. And the reason we left this to last is because we were creating a little space right on the screen within our template uh, to place that honeybee, you know, leaving it blank so that it would fit in there very nicely. So we're going to come over here, all of our different headings under holiday. We've got this and that. We've got borders, frames and borders, that is. We also have birds and insects. We're going to select birds and ex insects. We're going to scroll down. Oops, we don't want a spider. So we're going to remove the spider. Hold it down, delete it, because we don't want spiders. Okay, go back in there, birds and insects, and the honeybee is design number 13. Okay. So there's our honeybee, okay. When we look at this, you know, uh, sometimes what I like to do is I like to make the screen a little bit bigger so we can see our handles. Okay, the one right at the top is the rotate. So I can swing it around. And then I can select it by clicking and moving it into position. Now if we want to see it a little, um, the whole of the screen, I close out of it. That way we can see it. Do we like that positioning? If we do, we can leave it. If not, we can edit the positioning on the honeybee by selecting it and moving it. I'm going to move it over a little bit further to the right. Okay, let's see how that works. Okay. Um, Deselect everything, see if our positioning, this is what I would do at this time. I would, I would look at my screen and I would make any final adjustments to my screen at this time to make sure that everything is positioned properly. So kind words, do we like it? And I like to look at the spacing on this side versus this side. And since um, that doesn't really matter because we're trying to stay within our template space, the, the 750 by 850 size. So um, we're going to position things as needed, re, you know, move them around, okay, as you so need. This one, I might want to bring it up a little bit higher onto the workspace so it's centered a little bit better. Eh, not too bad. I, and I'm looking for the area up in here to the letter between the flowers on the bottom. Okay. So I think it's pretty good. Okay. So our honey is right there. It's not outside. We don't want to make or we want to make sure that it's not outside of our um, template area as well. Okay, so maybe this one, I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Okay, deselect and then you can get a better idea, okay, of how that's all positioned. I think uh, right now everything is pretty much good to go, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my layers for the last time. And I'm going to make sure my orientation, because this is also the order that it's going to stitch out in. So I want to make sure that everything stays in position. So I'm going to take these two, the tulip and the coffee cup. I'm going to group those two together. Okay. These two, the two flowers, I'm going to group those two together. 
Okay. Now my words, I'm going to select each of the words, or the phrases, I should say, and I'm going to group them together as well. Now I'm down to three parts of the design. Now I want to make sure that my uh, bumblebee or my honeybee, whatever you want to call it, stitches last. So I'm going to move it down. So I select it on the, the lines over here and I just drag them into the last position. Uh, now I'm going to select this one and that one. The main portion of the design, the designs, the lettering, and the B, and I'm going to group them together. Now you may be asking, well, why did I group them in, or in different categories? So if I were to ungroup anything, you know, it's not going to ungroup the whole of the design. It's going to ungroup them in categories. It makes it so that you're, you're not moving a, a different part of the design uh, when all you wanted was maybe, say, like uh, the, the two flowers, okay? So anyway, it makes it a lot easier. So with this particular one, I want to select multiple, deselect it, okay? Then this one, since I was just using it as a template, I could, you know, a lot of times I'll just leave my template as is so that I know what size template I used if I were to use that design later on. But in this category, I'm going to just go ahead and select options up here. Under options, I'm going to say delete that because I don't want that stitching out. All I want is the lettering and the designs that we merged in together. Okay. So I'm going to say everything is good. Okay, so uh, at this time I want to make sure everything is centered in the hoop that I selected. So under my hoop settings, remember, I selected the 260 by 200 hoop. Okay, I'm good there. So I'm going to go ahead, close out of that field, and I want to come back into the design itself and make sure the design is centered in that hoop. That's going to give me a little bit better idea as to the, the placement of that design on my towel. So I want to hit the center button right here and notice how it moved to the center of that hoop. Okay, uh, close out of that and deselect everything and we're good to go. So now what I would do is um, to um, um, stitch this out on the embroidery side, I'd go to Stitch Out. And then at this point in time, I want to make sure that I sort everything. Okay, so I'm going to check book or check mark that, sort. I'm going to merge. I want, oh, I don't want one color, so I want to sort those two. One color would make all of my design the one color and the machine wouldn't stop. We want the machine to stop. But when we, uh, when we're, when we merge things together, uh, such as these, these little flowers, we want them to stitch at the same time. The same way with our proverbs saying. We want that to stitch at the same time. So we're doing the sort and the merge and we want active stitch technology checked off. And in here it also it also recognizes what foot we should be using. So we're going to use a dynamic spring foot 60 free motion. That is checked off as well. Okay. And down below here we wanted to automatically thread cut between or with the jumps and so forth. Okay. And everything else is pretty much a good to go. One other thing I want to make mention to is also when you're using the embroidery feature, make sure you use your single needle plate. Okay, don't use the zigzag, but the single needle plate, which is in the very center position. I did that one time and I thought, oh my gosh, this is horrible. It was because I was in this mode rather than in the single needle. So I want to make sure that that's also checked off. Say okay to this and we're good to go.
Okay, so now what we need to do, we, it, it tells you pretty much what you need to do next is attach the hoop. So I have to go and I have to hoop my stabilizer. In this situation, what I the stabilizer that I'm using for this project is going to be a tearaway. Okay, you could also use a, a wash away um, uh, the stabilizer, like a, the mesh stabilizer would be good for this towel as well. Uh, but I'm going to use the, the tear away. Okay. So I'm going to say okay to it. And I'm going to hoop my stabilizer. Now I'll be back in a second after I hoop my stabilizer and we'll continue on at this point. Okay. We're back at the embroidery machine. So I've Hoop my stabilizer, use the tear away like we talked about before with the 260 by 200 hoop like we had set up uh, when we designed our, um, our complete design as you can see right there. Okay. Now, next thing is I place the towel, okay, right down the middle of the hoop using the markers on the the markings on the hoop like right here is a marking which is this is the center of the hoop okay so now I also uh, place the edge of my towel right up even with the edge of the hoop so if that particular uh, position doesn't work uh, we can move the towel or pull the towel downward. I have not attached the towel to the hoop at this time. I chose not to use a sticky stabilizer or a spray adhesive either, okay? Because sometimes what happens uh, when you use those uh, sticky uh, stabilizers, they can gum up your needle and um, I, you know, I tend to stay away from um, using some of those products. And I'm not just saying that you should as well, but um, it, it um, you know, it doesn't create the gumminess on the needle. And it also protects the machine as well. Like if you were going to use a spray adhesive, because sometimes that spray kind of gets all over and you could get it onto your uh, uh uh, the mechanical part on your machine. And I try to uh, stay away from those products because I don't want it to gum up my machine. Okay. Uh, so now what I did is I just laid that towel on here. I pretty much centered it down the middle. Okay. The next thing is I want to make sure that I based uh, the towel onto the hoop. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to open up my palette. Okay, uh, this is the, the breakdown of how the, the design itself will stitch out. Okay, so what I want to do with this, I want to apply a basting stitch at this time to hold everything in place. So I'm going to activate the base around design. Okay, say okay to it. You could also do based around the hoop if you so choose, but I want to do around the design because I'm also going to use this base stitch to see the placement of that design itself. Now, notice how it, it, it moved into position. That's where it's uh, going to start to base at that point in time. Now, since I didn't apply any sticky or have any sticky stabilizer to my uh, my stable or a sticky uh, back uh, adhesive to any of my my hoop or my uh, towel. I want to be able to manipulate if if it happens to to move out of position. I can move it. So I'm going to connect my foot control. Now this foot controller that I have is a multi position foot control okay it looks just like this comes in this type of box multifunction foot controller okay it has placements for different opportunities if uh, you want to raise your presser foot or if you want to cut or uh, your thread at the error in any time but um, and it also has on the bottom of it a very stable 
uh, base to it. So that foot controller will not be moving around on your floor. So you can always find it, okay? So I do recommend using this multifunction foot control. It's, it's great for doing this particular function that we're going to do for basting around, okay? And another reason I'm going to do this, why I put that base up there, is because I'm going to use that foot control to baste. So when I'm working with this, okay, I want to be able to move and to hold down my fabrics and possibly stop the base stitch at any time I so choose to make maybe make adjustments to my towel. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and start it. We'll, we can talk through this as we go. So I'm pressing down on the foot controller. Okay, it's doing its basic. And so I have my free, my hands free to do as I need to. Now if I want it to stop, all I do is release the pressure on the foot controller and it stops basting. So I'm going to continue on with this so that it goes around. And anytime I can use my hands then to control the positioning on the fabric, I can go at any speed I want as well. And that's giving me a lot of flexibility to smooth out the area to make sure it's sitting right in the center of my hoop. Okay, and it cuts at the very end. I do like the positioning for the design. So it's a little bit up. It's about an inch and a half up, up from the bottom edge of my towel. And I do like that. Okay. So I think I'm pretty much good to go with this particular design. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and stitch out my design. And um, I can close out of my uh, color palette if I want to see where it's going on my screen. And so you've got all your, your colors uh, designated and so forth. So I'm going to let you guys go ahead and stitch out your design as well. And I will be back and show you the finished result. Hi everyone, uh, I just wanted to show you the finished uh, towel that we just got through embroidering. Okay, really pretty and I think um, everything seems to be positioned uh, uh, really good. Okay, so anyway that's our finished towel. Um, to close, I just want um, everyone to realize that um, visiting uh, Annette or um, Larry at Phil's, they have so many of these supplies that you can um, utilize with your embroidery. Uh, this is that foot control I showed you and how to use it and so forth. Uh, here is the backside. It's got this little rubber on the backside, which you know really works well for non-slipping with uh, with the foot control itself. So um, you might want to consider one of these, so it's really, really a good fit control. Um, and this is what the box looks like if you're so curious, you know. Okay. Then we can never be without our uh, bobbins. So these are pre-wound bobbins that are specifically for FOF machines. So I, I really like them, but uh, if you decide you want to wind your own, you could definitely wind, wind your own uh, bobbins with uh, a bobbin thread, okay? Don't uh, ever forget needles. Every time you start a project, you should always replace your needles. And uh, Larry and Annette have a really nice supply of needles on hand. And of course, your threads, uh, any type of threads I've found. I've used different brands of threads. So whatever brand that you find works for your machine, that's great. Go ahead and utilize it. Now the towels that I uh, that I used, you know, um, these I purchased, you know, online. But you know, I know that Larry um, and Annette also have some towels that they have in their store. Uh, you may check with them to see, you know, what kind of towels they have and if they would work for this project. Um, 
there is, uh, you know, because I know that they've had towels in the past, and so you might want to check with them on towels. Another thing that I was searching when I was searching for towels, I found this material. This material um, is already cut to width, okay? Here, I'm struggling with this because I bought quite a few yards of it. And so what you can do is you can hem it up on your sides and also on the bottom. Uh, and you can get different colors in this fabric too. This is a linen fabric. And so you can utilize, you know, uh, the fact that you can um, purchase towels uh, or the fabric by, by the yard if you so choose. And uh, make as many as you want to at that point in time. But anyway, this is this is all good to know. So, but anyway, if you guys have any questions, uh, be sure to uh, contact Annette or uh, Larry at Phil Sewing in uh, downtown Washington, Missouri. So until next time, okay, have a good time sewing. <laughs>